We are live. I think we're live. Hey everyone, welcome back to, to this episode of The Deep Dive, featuring... Who are you? Who are you? Molly. <laughs> are we live? Can you hear us? Where's the chat? There. This is the chat. Mm. Guys, if you can hear us, let us know. And we shall begin. Can you hear us? I swear we've clicked the live button. We should be... There might be live. a delay because... Yeah, there's going to be a I've delay. I've seen it before. There's a delay. There was a significant delay. Oh. Is that hello? I think it's a hello. Oh, okay. Let's see. Are we actually live? Molly? <laughs> Are we live? Can you hear us? Yes. yes. We can be heard. This is fantastic. Sweet. So let's minimize that. We've got the chat. There we go. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of The Deep Dive. Um, what are we talking about today? <laughs> I don't know, I've been forced here against my will, so uh, I will be doing whatever you tell me to do. Wonderful. Apparently, App apparently fantastic. Okay, <laughs> so in this little deep dive, we're going to be talking about lessons that we've learned from the last two years of being doctors. Does that sound reasonable? Okay, yeah. Um, and so in preparation for this, lots of you sent in questions via Instagram. Some of them were mildly inappropriate, as always. Um, but we have some very good questions, some of which are medical themed, some of which are non-medical themed. And so those are the ones that we're going to be tackling. Does that sound OK? Sounds amazing. Is there anything you would like to plug in, in initially in the preliminary stages? Um, well, I guess. Shall I just Inst introduce Instagram. myself? Instagram. Shall I just introduce yeah, yeah. It, oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> we, we, we need an introduction and we need an Instagram plug. Um, so my name's Molly. I am a junior doctor working in the Cambridge region. Um, Ali and I met at university. We both went to the same college at Cambridge. Um, and so we've known each other for what, eight years now? Yes. And we've lived together for the past two years. Um, and that's essentially me. I really like food. So one of my main hobbies is my Instagram, which is Cambridge Foodie. Um, and I have a website as well where I basically blog about food and a bit about my life. Nice. That was a very succinct introduction. I feel, I feel it, it's almost as if you've done that before. Um, Every time you've made me do that. Oh, we're, we're, <laughs> we're out of focus now. We're back. Oh, we're back in focus. This, this microphone keeps getting in the way. This is problematic. Um, everyone, please follow Molly's Instagram account. Maybe it's linked in the video description. Oh, it is. I Potentially. Maybe it's not. Who knows? Um, sh shall we kick things off? Yeah. Okay. Question number one, what's what's something you wish you knew before you started your careers as doctors? <laughs> We're getting deep. <laughs> um, what do you wish you knew? Something I wish I knew. Um, I think one thing recently that I've started thinking, because I, the structure of the training of medicine is a bit mysterious to people who aren't involved in it um so essentially here in the uk you either do five or six years at university um before you're qualified from that point you're qualified as a doctor and then you have to do two years of what we call foundation training so f1 f2 um and we're just coming to the end of our f2 year now and after that point that's when you choose what your specialty is going to be. So then you might choose to do medicine and specialise further or do surgery or paediatrics, psychiatry, that kind of thing. Um, I, At the moment, we're now at the stage where we have to choose what we do next. And I don't really know at the moment what that is for me. I don't think you do either. Nope. Um, and so I kind of wish I'd known at the beginning that you didn't have to decide that really early doors and there is the option of taking time out or um, having extra time, you know, doing s different specialties that you want to try a bit more um, before you then make that big decision that I'm going to train in this forever. Um, because otherwise it suddenly hits you at the point of F2 that you are either good because you are doing the right thing and keeping going and doing your training or you're supposedly bad because you haven't chosen yet. And actually, I think it's important to know that it's not just a dead cert. You can mould your career in medicine the whole way through, basically. Yeah. You can kind of do what you want. And it yeah. doesn't matter if you don't really know what to do. Yeah. Because we both that's don't what know what to do. That's what we're telling ourselves. Exactly. That's, that's the way forward. 
That is the way forward. Oh, we've got a comment. Ali's hair is so freaking glorious. Nice. Thank you. Um, I love that you picked that out of thank you, Anderson the thousands Council. of messages there. Um, you choose to focus we, on that. We, we have another one. Will Molly, will, will Molly miss Ali once Ali moves to America? <laughs> no. I think he's saying I will, he, I he, will, he will miss, miss Molly. Molly once Ali moves to America. Oh. That's cute. That's nice. That's very sweet. Yeah. Um, okay. Another one. Uh, after two years as a doctor, what would you do differently if you went back to med school? I'll go first with this yeah, one. Yeah, you haven't answered. I haven't answered. Um, if I were to go back to med school, I would do a little bit more spaced repetition and a little bit more active recall because I feel like <laughs> like we knew so much stuff in first and second year. Yeah. We were like absolutely like dons like, mm. of like preclinical medicine in first and second year. And then you just don't revisit it ever. And then it just disappears from your brain. And there are very occasionally moments in real life where I think, oh, I knew this fact at one point in first year, but I don't know anymore. And it would look really impressive if I could just bust it out right now. Mm. So, for example, if I, you know, assisting in operations and stuff, if you're doing a C-section, uh, a cesarean section for the first time with a consultant, they might ask you, hey, well, you know, what, what are the layers of the anterior abdominal wall? Or they might ask you what that muscle is. Or they might ask you, what is the transversalis uh, fascia? And all of those things are stuff that we definitely knew in first year. Mm -hmm. And all of those things and things where we're now like, oh, oh I don't know enough it's to be somewhere. able to. It's, yeah. it's, it's somewhere. And I think if I had just done a little bit of active recall and space repetition of old stuff as I went on through medicine, it would have just made me a more impressive looking doctor, even though objectively probably wouldn't have made much difference in real so life. So you just want it for the... Uh, for, yeah, for the stats. For the stats. For the brand. Yeah. yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um... To be honest, what was the question? What we would change? If you would do differently if you went back to med school? I don't think I would change anything. To be, I think the only thing for me is obviously my intense fear and meltdowns around exam period, I think could have been slightly less regular. Um, but those did get better towards the end of medical school. So that was a gradual learning process. I don't think I could have changed that. Well, you would say I could, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, that would be the only thing to obviously have fewer of those times where I thought uh, I thought everything was going terribly. But actually, looking back, I really enjoyed the whole thing. So you won't change anything other than just having fewer fewer meltdowns. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, we've got another question here. What's the most hated aspect of your job that people often overlook? <laughs> uh, the most hated aspect. Right. What do you hate most about it? I mean the. The actual job of medicine, I don't really hate anything. I think we've both said this before that the the admin surrounding it is the thing I hate most. It's the fact that, and I know that there's lots of other jobs where this applies as well, but um, certainly for us, there's not planning annual leave in advance is really really tricky. Um, so if my friends at the moment, for instance, are talking about a holiday next May. Um, and obviously there's a lot more reasons why that might be an issue at the moment. But normally if my friends talk about holiday next year, they will want to book, they'll want to sort it out pretty quickly. And I will not know until maybe three weeks before whether there's a chance I'm gonna get the time off. And so far I've never missed something I really, really needed to go to, like sisters' weddings and things like that. But it's the... Um, the stress around not knowing how whether you're going to get that time off and it sometimes goes right to the line like I, it was a couple of days before my sister's wedding that I finally got my annual leave approved so it's just that constant level of having to sort that out that I find really tricky nice mm. I think sort of apart from the general admin and sort of the fact that it's a job that I dislike about it one thing that I I don't like is actually the feeling of responsibility when you've made a mistake <laughs> because if you've made a mistake and you know you've made a mistake then sometimes a mistake like it, it, it doesn't matter stuff was stuff was sorted out but occasionally you realize oh crap you know you get that sinking sensation when you know you've done something mm. wrong which means a patient is I don't know has, suffered harm in some way or another you know most of the time it's very minor like oh the patient we had to call the patient back into hospital but even then it's still like oh you know if, if i'd just done things a bit differently 
then we wouldn't have had to call them back into hospital, for example. And, you know, they, they'd have been home nicely with their family, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So just that, that sort of sinking sensation when, when someone says, hey, Ali, do you remember that patient that you saw on Monday? And you're like, oh, God, <laughs> what is it now? Please tell me. That and it's horrible. sort of that sort of you're sort of on, on the edge of your seat wondering. Yeah. Do you remember when I sent the blood tests in the wrong bottles? <gasps> Why'd you tell the story? <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know if it might be too soon. I essentially I sent the wrong a blood test um, in the wrong bottle because in different hospitals you have different bottles for different like different colours mean different things and so certain blood tests have to go in particular ones and these particular blood tests um, the patients had come in from the community to have a blood test and then. I, they had to be sent off to a different hospital and so the other hospital had different bottles and I didn't realise and only found out at the end of the clinic and I've been doing a whole clinic sending off happily the wrong coloured bottles so the patients would have to come back and have it repeated which was I coped with really well that evening <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Ali <laughs> put all the blood in the wrong bottle <laughs> yeah no that feeling is horrible when you know you've messed up yeah but hey it happens um let's move to a non-medical question uh felix asks why is molly moving out <laughs> <laughs> um well a number of reasons uh we initially probably planned to only live together for two years at the beginning because my boyfriend lives in derby at the moment but he's moving down to cambridge um, next month so the plan was always to wait hopefully and see if we were still together and if we were then we would be moving in in Cambridge so that's why I'm leaving yeah man things worked according to plan <laughs> <laughs> uh, another non-medical question Molly you do wheelchair races do you use one all the time or for certain activities only um, no I don't use a wheelchair all the time um, I so essentially for the background because people will be confused um i had bone cancer when i was younger so i've had a hip replacement and various different things like nerve damage in my foot and um problems with growth in my legs so basically my left leg is not great and so i usually have to use a stick um to get around or i'll use crutches quite a lot of the time if i'm doing going outside for walks and that kind of thing um wheelchair i have i tend to reserve it for like day trips or um on holiday for instance if we're exploring a whole city um or say we're going to like a theme park then i might use a wheelchair um but for racing i have a separate racing chair um so that's a hobby i took up probably about five years ago now um and it's really good fun. It means, because I obviously wouldn't be able to do, you know, running races, but it means that I can get involved in 5Ks, 10Ks, that kind of thing, um, using the racing chair. We've got a fun question from the chat from Mike Jones. Mm. Ali, are you upset that Molly had an easier time in life due to her white <laughs> privilege? <laughs> Please do it up, right? Um. <laughs> <laughs> no comment? <laughs> no comment. Great. Uh, do you feel your life is boring? Um, do I feel my life is boring? No. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening to the house when Ali moves to America? <laughs> this America thing, honestly. Um, yeah, we'll see whether he moves to America. Hi, Molly. How do you feel about Ali leaving to America? Again, we'll see if he leaves to America. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, do you ever have a bath? Wow. Anyway, uh, next question is, um, let's, go, let's do another medical one. Any heartwarming interactions with patients? Um, I mean, loads. There's so many, there's always heartwarming interactions, like every day, whether they're small things or big things. Um, really? <laughs> if you seek them out, I don't know. I, um, I had a really nice one recently where a um, patient was quite unwell and we were quite worried that he might die in hospital. And so we found out that actually what he really wanted to do was to get married. And so 
we managed to arrange for him to have not a wedding unfortunately because it just wasn't possible at the time but we managed to do like a blessing ceremony um and get his partner in and had like a a video call in from the vicar doing a really emotional uh ceremony and that was like one of those moments where you're like well this is my job this is crazy but yeah that was really nice and i think that meant a lot to them nice <laughs> <laughs> how about you um i was gonna say a few weeks ago um because i'm on i'm on gynecology i was i was ch- i was chatting to a lady um asking various questions you know on in, in, in certain medical specialties, you ask very pointed questions about people's sex lives, for example. Um, and what did she say? She, uh, so um, we were talking about sort of se- sexual partners and stuff, because when you're doing a sexual history, you ask them whether they, they've been kind of sleeping with one person for a long time or multiple people, that sort of thing. Uh, and she said that, yeah, I've had one I've, I've had one sexual partner and my husband for the last 35 years. And I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And she burst out laughing <laughs> and she was like, that's like the best thing anyone said to me all week. And I was like, nice. <laughs> and I felt like that was a heartwarming interaction because I took the risk <laughs> about, with adding a little bit of banter <laughs> because I sort of gauged that she was pretty chill and yeah, yeah she enjoyed it. So that's, <laughs> that's really emotional. That, that's Thank my you. emotional heartwarming interaction. Wow. Uh, <laughs> did Molly ever experience sexism during work by patients or coworkers? Um, well, yeah, I think it's, I think you do experience it. I've, I've never felt that it's sort of stopped me doing something, but that you definitely see little things all the time. Like, um, you definitely see that if there's a female consultant, they get mistaken for a junior doctor much more regularly than a male consultant would do. Um, and like asked to do like a discharge summary for a patient and they're actually the consultant. Um, we, you get a lot of comments about what you wear, I find. I don't know if you get that. I mean, at the moment we're wearing scrubs, so it's quite good. I wear bright orange trainers. I always get comments about that. Fair. And um, occasionally when I wear the headband as well, I get comments about that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we get a lot of like, um, I remember like we were all wearing black dresses and it was like three, female doctors who were on the ward round and this patient was like oh you could have worn a bit something a bit brighter all of you and um was a bit sort of dismissive to all of us and talked about our the color of our dresses for the whole ward round rather than actually acknowledging that the consultant was here to review him um but yeah only little things like that or little like inappropriate comments from generally older patients (laughs) nice for the record, I have not experienced any sexism in the workplace. Uh, next question. Are you able to somewhat have a normal work slash personal life balance? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to have a work-life balance, then you choose what that balance is, basically. Yeah. I think a lot of the whole, oh my God, being a doctor is really hard is just sort of heavily inflated by the media. Because like, our, we only work like 45 hours a week on average. Yeah. And that's basically a nine to five with a few extra hours on average. Yeah, and on average. Yeah. You have some weeks where you work 70 hours and some weeks where you work 30. Hmm. But that's how averages work. Exactly. Very good. <laughs> uh, so it's very, very doable to have a decent work-life balance. Yeah. Provided you care about that sort of thing. Um, are the best bits of being a doctor the same as what you thought they would be? Well, what do you think the best bits of being a doctor are? So, I I think I thought that the best bit of being a doctor would be like the whole, I don't know, you get to have heartwarming interactions with patients. But actually, I think the best bit of being a doctor is just the banter that you have with your co-workers. Yeah. Like, it's just like really fun hanging out with other doctors and nurses and stuff on the ward and you sort of get to know each other really well. And it's like, it's like when you go into work, you're like hanging out with your buddies, uh, depending on which ward you are and assuming you get on with the team. But that is, that's such a large proportion of it. Like, whereas, you know, you might once in a blue moon get a patient married off Mm. or something and that would be nice and heartwarming. Mm. It wouldn't be very high measure. It would be high magnitude, but not high measure in that sort of the frequency of those interactions compared to the overall amount of time you're at work is quite low. Whereas the amount of time you spend just hanging out with your colleagues at work is actually really high. 
Um, and that is probably my favorite part of going into work each day. Yeah. I don't know, I'm trying to think because obviously when we initially wrote our personal statements, we probably wrote what we thought were gonna be the best bits, like a lifelong learning, career in learning, yeah. things like that, which I do genuinely still like that aspect mm. of it, that we're always learning new things. Like that's really interesting to have a job that you get to learn every single day. But I feel like in a lot of jobs you get to learn every single day. In, in most of the jobs that our friends from university are doing, they're, they're learning new stuff all the time. Yeah. It's not a thing that's... I don't know. I think a lot of jobs you wouldn't, though. Yeah. If you were doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> yeah. No, fair enough. And we... You know, medicine is constantly evolving. New things are always turning up. Mm. Um, I still do like that aspect. I do like the aspect of helping people, being able to... You know, the fulfilment of helping someone to feel better, feel more comfortable, you know, those kind of things. But... Yeah, I do think that if you've got a good team around you, that's yeah. that's the thing you look forward to in the going into work, don't you? Do you find that you so I find that I always feel more fulfilled when it's when it's been like a thing that I have specifically done to help the patient. Mm. Like if I've gone above and beyond to arrange their scan out of hours or something. Yeah. Whereas most of the progress in medicine, sort of most of the healing that is done is done very much by by the system, by the team, mm. by the guidelines, by following the protocol whereas occasionally you'll go out of your way to do something like or organize a wedding for someone and then mm. that that will make you feel more good than just the generic run of the bill mill patient is getting better over time yeah you don't come home with like a halo over your head every single day being like i made such a difference Hashtag saving lives it's, it's just it's just when like that particular feeling is when you've personally gone that extra bit for someone yeah um but yeah Cool. Um, do you think becoming a doctor has made you a better people person in general? I feel like you're always just a pretty good people person. Yeah, but I do think it's, I mean, it's constant social interaction, isn't yeah. it? So you're constantly testing that. Um, yeah. You know, testing that skill and learning how to communicate. And we literally had communication skills training, which the Joe public wouldn't get that at university of how to communicate with people. So I guess it does improve your interactions in that way. Yeah, I would agree. Um, how do you cope with difficult days at work? What tactics do you use to keep ticking and focused? Um, well, what do you do? I don't really have difficult days at work. Mm. Or if I do, it's like I get home and I just sort washes of off you. Occasionally complain about it to you. Yeah. Like, well, I, <laughs> that doctor at work. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's the thing. That's a coping mechanism. Yeah, like venting to friends. Offloading, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I guess, what are the things I find difficult? I find it difficult if I feel like we haven't done as good a job as we could have done. Mm. That's often because you haven't been able to complete all the jobs that were on your list because there were too many jobs. Um, but otherwise, I don't know what a difficult day at work would be unless it's something where you've found out you've made a mistake or something like that. But, I mean, I just offload to people, talk it through, um, call about 10 people, and then after that, eat nice food and go to the gym nice that's my way of relaxing solid coping strategies yeah uh if you were to get on a 24-hour flight what is the one book you would bring with you see i don't really read when i'm on flights because i'm so terrified through the whole thing oh yeah <laughs> i bring books on holiday every time and never read them because i'm so scared of flying that's a good cop out. <laughs> yeah. What's a book you would take on holiday then? It changes. I, well, I always like either, well, they've always got a medical twist and they're normally either like a novel where the character has something medically wrong with them or there's the category of like patient stories telling their story um, or doctor's memoirs those are basically my three different categories basically everything to do with medicine yeah exactly nice um so there's loads of different books one of them that i really loved recently was 
called With the End in Mind, and that is a um, palliative care consultant's memoirs, basically, of patients who she's looked after in the sort of last days, weeks, months of life, and I thought that was very poignant. I would take The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a good illustration of the contrast between. Yeah. <laughs> there was this palliative care memoir and it was very poignant. <laughs> oh, yeah, good fantasy book. It's about a kid who like learns he can do magic and then goes to some school for magic. But like, you know, <laughs> it's really good. Great. Yes. Um, would you date each other if you were single? <laughs> that's not answer that. No. <laughs> uh, that's my answer. Fine, that's my answer as well. <laughs> sure. Um, is Ali messy or tidy around the house? Hey, it's pretty It's pretty tidy today. No, look, he has, this is the first time ever that I've come home and he's tidied the whole thing and it's just for this live stream. You, that? Never, you never even clean normally for the your usual live streams, but it's because you're going to see more of the background in this well, one. We also had the cleaner come over earlier this afternoon. Did you actually? Yeah. That's why. I didn't know that. That's why the house is looking I so I was clean. very impressed with your cleaning skills. I thought that you didn't would never do that normally. Uh, the new Hoover arrived as well, and so I was playing with it. <laughs> right, fine. And I got rid of all, all the all the cobwebs from the balcony. Right. And from the gym thingy outside. So it's In been a really productive day. In answer to your day. question, Ali is not tidy. Fine. <laughs> uh, okay. We've got, what do you both want to specialise in? I'm thinking emergency medicine. I don't really know. Medicine of some sort, not surgery. Okay. Do doctors get paid a lot? Um, well, it depends what your scale is. If it's a good salary, but it's nowhere near the salary of my friends who've gone off and earned the big bucks in their big London corporate jobs, but it's also above the average salary in the UK. So it's comfortable. It's comfortable, mm -hmm. as rich people say. Um, if all of a sudden you weren't legally allowed to be a doctor, <laughs> like you got struck <laughs> off, <laughs> legally allowed. what would yeah, you do? Am I still allowed to do other jobs? <laughs> what, what would you do instead? Um, I'd be a teacher. Really? Hmm. Oh, like primary school, secondary school? Secondary school science teacher. Nice. Biology and chemistry, not physics. <laughs> nice. I used to do tutoring and I really liked it. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. That's something new I didn't know about you. But if I couldn't be a teacher like if it had to be my dream job you know like there's either your realistically what would you do i'd probably go off and be a teacher um but my dream job would be to be a restaurant critic why would you not do the dream job because i don't think i'd be very good at criticizing food so then why is it your dream job well, because I just want to eat the food at restaurants, like get invited to restaurants oh, and eat so you food. Want, you want to be a food influencer, but not necessarily a critic where yeah. you have to actually review. Yeah, because if I, I'm never mean about food because I like all food normally. So okay, I wouldn't be a very good, reliable critic if I just went and said, this is good. I see. This is also good. <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> so you want the sort of job that gives you loads of free food, but it, it yeah. means you don't have that to criticize anything. That would be my dream anything. job, yeah. Okay. So Cambridge foodie, basically. Just full time. Yeah, full time eating nice food. Yeah, by the way, guys, follow Molly's Instagram. Oh, we have a super chat. Cal H has given £1.99 to ask the question which Anki deck for finals can you share? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Anki is, so uh, I let, won't be helpful here. I mean, it depends. Are, are we talking UK finals? Are we talking USMLE? Like, what are we talking about here? Um, the USMLE decks are pretty good. I would look at Anking version 7. That's very good. That applies to most medical schools, even if you're not taking the USMLE. So that would be my recommendation. Thank you for the £1.99. We can use that to buy half a miso soup next time we order sushi. Or a whole pot noodle. Really? Mm. Nice. Okay. Um, will Molly start her own YouTube channel? And if yes, what will, will, it, what will it be about? Uh, no. I don't plan to start a new YouTube channel. If I did, then it would be about food. But I don't have any plans to do that. Why not? Because I don't, do, you hardly ever get me to be on camera. Sure. I don't like being on camera. Mm, that's what you say. Is that, is, is that actually true though? Yeah, but as in I don't want to, 
I wouldn't want to film myself all the time, I don't think. Well, it's, it's not all the time, it's once like, a week. I don't, I look at your lifestyle and I don't want that. Okay, but... So why would I want to do YouTube? But you can do YouTube without going as extreme as I do on it. Mm. I like taking photos of food. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, how does Molly feel, feel about you moving to the US? Um, I still stick to my previous answer of not definitely thinking that Ali's going to move to the US, but we'll let him prove me wrong. Yep. Uh, please, please, please talk about imposter syndrome and how to deal with it. Um, Do you get imposter syndrome? Well, yeah. Not anymore, though. At the moment, like, well, I do. All right. What's, so what are we defining Tell as imposter more. syndrome? Whatever Thinking you that you aren't good enough. I don't know. How or do you, that you're... How do you define imposter syndrome? That you're an imposter in what you're doing, that people are going to discover that you are yeah. not as good as you think, <laughs> as you are qualified as. Yeah, kind of this fear that you've stumbled into something and mm. at any moment now you're going to get found out and people are going to be like, yeah. Um, do you get that feeling? Slash, did you get that feeling at the start? And... Yeah, I, d do I don't really get that feeling now, actually. Not much, but that's because I'm not in a, probably not in a new scenario. Every time I'm in a new scenario, it's more that I I want to do my best in each situation and I don't want to be um, feeling like I'm not good enough. But that's not the same as thinking I'm going to be found out as an imposter because I, I think as we've gone along, we've got more and more qualifications, haven't we? And like more and more, that to me has been more and more evidence that I'm meant to be doing this, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like in first year, at, yeah. you know, so like we, at the got, start, we got at into the start Cambridge. Of the job. I 100% in first year of medical school thought there's no way I should be here. I'm going to fail all my exams. I'm not good enough. They've made a mistake letting me in. You know, that's just what I spent my first year thinking. And then gradually each year, I'd build up more and more evidence by doing okay in exams. And each year that's more and more evidence for me that yes, this is the right thing and you're good enough to be here. So I guess you just, but how much evidence do you need to eventually convince yourself? I think if I then went into a new thing, I'd need more evidence in that avenue. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like overall your self-esteem is just generally quite low and, you, and therefore you need a large amount of information external validation mm. to mm. build your internal sense of But then self. I would also say that my self-esteem is mm. not that low. Okay. I don't like, I used to have probably quite low self-esteem, but now I'm quite confident in myself. Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying in the past. Yeah, yeah. But that's probably because then I've got enough evidence. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I... like it took six years of you doing well in medical school exams to realize that you weren't a failure. Yeah. Oof, that seems yeah but now I haven't <laughs> yeah. had an exam for two years and now I'm at the point where I'm having to book onto MRCP which is like the first like if you're doing specializing in medicine then you have to do more exams as you go through um to get more qualified and, and sort of you know go up to being a consultant so MRCP1 is the first exam I'll have to do and I've been really putting off doing any exams since uni because I hate that feeling of not being good enough and thinking you're gonna fail so so I feel like once I do that I'll then be like oh god I'm not good enough to do this oh one. so if you it's a new thing if you imagine yourself preparing for it and and doing it yeah like objectively it's not going to touch the sides yeah, but I'm terrified but, of failing But it still again. internally, yeah. you're really worried that, oh crap, yeah, I'm going to yeah. fail it. And I don't yeah. think I can, really. Yeah, but that's not imposter syndrome. That's just fear of failure. Yeah. It's not me thinking I shouldn't be at this stage. Yeah, okay. But yeah, every, every new rung on the ladder is always going to be... Interesting. <laughs> have that low level of, well, low level, we'll see how low it is. So, but yeah, I'm, I was like, I could have booked one in September, but I didn't because I was like, oh, I don't have enough time now. I can't do it in two months. And now the next one's in January, but it's two years, two days after my birthday. And I'm like, oh, no. So I don't know. We'll see if I actually get it done this year. So how, how much do you identify with the phrase, how hard can it be? Um, well, I don't ever use that, really. Okay. So... <laughs> I'm, so for 
for every challenge that comes your way, you think, right, this is a big deal. Come on, Molly, you can do it. R rather than the s sort of the border borderline arrogance that people like me or Jake would approach exams and be like, yeah, it's yeah. an exam. I'll prepare for it. How hard can it be? Yeah, yeah. What do you think that is? <laughs> why i don't yeah. have that same feeling why are you not arrogant <laughs> why are you not just a twat um he's still not allowed to use that word mm. um i don't know i don't know i don't know i I wish a lot of the time that I could be more confident when it came to exams. Yeah. And I definitely, through medical school, I did get better and better and better. Yeah, definitely. So I was less of a sort of wreck mm. by sixth year exam term than I was in first year yeah. by far. So I think I have got better at that as I've got older. Because like GCSEs, I was terrible. A-levels, I was completely terrible. And it just got gradually better from first year onwards. But... Mm. Um, it takes a lot of effort for me to have to say to myself, look, you've done okay so far. Okay. I have to present it to myself and be like when I'm in that moment and say, you have done well before. Yeah. You are, if you want to, you will do well. But I, I think there's two types of people. Like we've said before that there's like people who are aiming not to fail the exam and people who are aiming to do well in the exam. And I definitely feel like one of the people who's aiming not to fail the exam. And I revise to not fail. And on the side, manage to do well. Yeah. Because I'm revising so much because I'm terrified of failing. But that first and foremost is my fear when I open exam results is that I'll fail the exam. Not how well will I've done oh, in the exam. Interesting. Whereas like you and Jake, I know that you go for it and go, how well can I do in this exam? Mm. Which is just a totally different way of... Um, where does that come from aiming for it I don't know because but I do think there's two different people because yeah. if you talk to people they will either be on on one, one side, or one the side other. or the yeah. other definitely that's interesting um, I had a follow up question okay so if, uh, let's say someone's listening to this and they sort of r relate more to your position than, than to mine what kind of advice would you give for people to become be more self confident in themselves about this uh, about like exam results or any other anything else really like other than just sort of the barrage of uh ex external validation <laughs> mm. <laughs> or empirical mm. data is there anything else that you do more internally to help uh, um, the self-confidence front um, well i don't know i think that's the main thing i do is present evidence to myself because mm. i remember in like second year i think i literally made a document on my computer which was like things i have done Yep. I think it's still there. And it's literally a list to myself of things by second year that I had done so that I could look back on that when I was being like, I am not achieving anything. And then look at it and go, okay, no, I've done quite a lot of things or I've done well in these exams or I've um, done these extracurricular things. So I don't need to worry. But... Okay. That's the main thing I, I do. But then the problem is, what if you don't have that evidence? And you want to push yourself to be one of these people who's just going for it to do as well as you can. But I don't really know what else I do. I think it just comes with time as well. And as you get older, less... Like, there's that idea of if your whole identity is one thing then you're going to be very stressed if that one thing falls apart. So if your entire identity is doing well in exams, then if you don't do well in one exam, then that's everything gone, isn't it? Whereas if you can spread your identity and spread what's, what you um, are striving to do well in, so say it's for me doing well in the gym, like doing exercise and getting good at that, um, doing well academically doing well in my job as well um and having you know friendships that are fulfilling and things like that and and working at friendships um and then my food blog there are multiple different things so if one of those doesn't um doesn't go my way then I've got other things to to mm. go back on 
But I remember because I was thinking of that, the the time when I started thinking of that um, that sort of notion was that I not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> um, was when I broke my arm last year. Yeah. And because I remember, because for me, I randomly broke my arm in July, literally almost a year ago now. Um, and it was really, really difficult for me to deal with. And I guess normally breaking your arm might not be the complete end of the world. But for me, I broke my arm that I use for crutches. And so I therefore couldn't get around very much anymore. I had to use my wheelchair and actually be pushed in the wheelchair because I couldn't even push the wheelchair myself. So I was completely dependent on other people for a long time. Um, having gone from being a very independent, you know, F1 junior doctor. And I remember thinking about this this idea again about the facets of your personality and what you try to do well in. And I remember thinking, why is it that this has completely thrown me um, like nothing has in recent time? And I think it was because all of the things that I did, so I couldn't go for meals out anymore because I couldn't get there. So I couldn't do my Cambridge foodie stuff. I couldn't cook either because I couldn't use my arm. I couldn't work, so I didn't have that anymore. And I couldn't go to the gym or do any kind of exercise. So all of my things, and I couldn't even see my friends because I couldn't meet up with them. I couldn't get there and I was too unsafe to do that because I couldn't walk anywhere. So that destroyed like all of the things I was doing. Maybe if I had academic stuff going on at the same time, that could have kept me a bit more level but I didn't have an exam I was revising for so I think dividing your personality is clearly clearly helpful until the point when Mm. when all of of the dominoes are wiped out yeah and I remember coming back to you and saying that when I because I moved out to be with my parents when they were looking after me and I came back and you were like interrogating me about what I'd learned (laughs) (laughs) um and that was where I'd been thinking about that that made me think about why it was that that really hit me nice yeah so it sounds like you're saying diversify your identity um but to an extent that is a easier said than done but also there are things that are just going to happen that will just floor you and there's not really a lot you can do about them yeah other than just kind of work through them and come out the other side yeah and remember that those things have happened before and you've got through them hmm that was pretty deep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good deep stuff, dive. Man. <laughs> you did tell me it was called a yeah, deep man, dive. Yeah, we, we, we were diving, diving deep. Um, okay. Do you ever regret being doctors? No. No, easy. Okay. Uh, how, how much free time do you have in a day? Um, well, it depends on the day. If you're working a night shift or you're working a long day, then you don't really have any free time in those days. But... Um, normally, um, you have as much free time as anyone else. You come home and you've got four or five hours in the evening. Yeah, man. And if it's a weekend, you've got the whole day. Okay, we've got a question from the chat. So we're, we're going to turn to questions from the actual chat. If you want to get your question definitely answer, asked, then send a super chat in, you guys. Oh and that'll fund our takeaway this evening if we can make enough money wow. off of this live stream. Lol. Uh, we've got a question <laughs> from Jessica Castro who says, Molly, as a female doctor, what is the best advice you can give to young females pursuing medicine? Just go for it. I think if you... There's a lot of times where you... Certainly sometimes for me, I felt that I am a bit more nervous about putting myself out there or like answering questions publicly, like in lecture theatres and things like that. Um and also like asking for things, uh, I think is sometimes a bit tricky. So I think you've just got to have confidence in yourself and your abilities and go for it and um, find opportunities and ask to be a part of them if you can. Because there's lots of different things like projects and things that are always going on, but often you don't find them until you ask about them. Nice. Ali, why do you want to move to the US and not Australia or New Zealand? This is addressed in the video. Ali, are you still taking finasteride? Yes. Hi guys, there we go. According to what you know about, have experienced uh, how informative and experience promoting in the surgical field is training there. I don't really. Not quite sure what you mean. What Do you, you mean? Know I, th- I think I think this person means they want to be a surgeon and they're wondering about moving to the UK for training. Uh, um, 
I can't really answer that. I don't yeah, know I mean, about surgery. I think it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, people still have to kind of come in out of hours to get their case numbers up. And a lot of stuff is done by consultants now, which means the trainees com often complain that they have less time to be able to do their training cases. Um, I feel like this is the case in most places, but mm. can't really say anything about that. Um, <laughs> is the whole hit me up in Cambridge, if you happen to be in Cambridge to grab a cup of coffee still a thing? Ollie? Yes, it's on my website. It's um, very much the thing. Very much is a thing. People come over all the time. They are always here, so... Oh, interesting. I'm an intern in India and lost a patient recently who had some comorbidities along with COVID. Did you guys ever experience the sadness of losing a patient? And how did you cope with it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because in my first year, the whole first year of medicine, not one patient died when I was on my shift. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been you hashtagging saving lives. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Um, but you would, patients would often, I find that patients die out of hours more than in the day. I don't know why that is. But um, so you would still find that someone's not there or something when you come mm. back. But this year I've certainly, and especially with COVID, I have had a lot more um, patients dying when I've been there as well. I think it de depends completely on the circumstances because if it's a if it's a younger patient who had a reversible illness which you weren't able to treat, then that's a very different situation to someone who is very elderly, very frail, and you know perhaps has end stage sort of Alzheimer's or memory impairment and they're gradually fading away. Mm. Um, and I think often those patients who are the the more sort of frail patients um, or patients that you've been able to plan palliative care around and making them comfortable and helping with their symptoms I think actually that can be a really comforting thing if if it's done well um, but I think the the deaths that you haven't planned for and known were going to happen are much more tricky to deal with um, and can be quite unsettling um, but I think we've been trained very well to deal with that and to know what our, who it is we can speak to about it. Um, yeah. But I don't know if I've ever, I mean, I've been upset about patients dying, mm. but um, it hasn't often left me really upset for days, for instance. It's mm. something where it's a low level of that's really sad, but... Um, most of the time it is patients that you were expecting it and you've been able to put things in place to make it as peaceful as possible yeah yeah for me the one that comes to mind is um was sort of there was a patient who unexpectedly died um he had a he had a cardiac arrest and the resuscitation efforts were not successful and i was th i was thinking about that for like a solid week afterwards like it was keeping me up at night thinking kind of was there anything i could have done differently what should i have done differently uh, and sort of those sorts of thought patterns. Um, that was probably the most kind of difficult to deal with death. But ultimately, the important thing, like from my perspective, was that it was a learning opportunity. You can't change the past. All you can do is learn from it. And once I sort of made my peace with that and had like a debrief with my consultant and all this sort of stuff, then I sort of stopped worrying about it so much. But yeah, as you say, otherwise the majority of the, of the deaths that we get in hospital are fairly expected. Mm. Um, and it might be upsetting, but it's like, well, that's life, isn't it? Mm. Uh, oh, we're out of focus again. I think we're back in. Uh, hey Molly, a fan here. Love your grounded and sweet personality. What's the plan for the future as a medic? Uh, what specialty do you find yourself drawn to? For me, it's pediatrics. Oh. Um, yeah, I love pediatrics. Uh, I am torn between paediatrics, palliative care, um, general medicine and GP and I still don't know what I want to do. Maybe it will be a mixture of all of them at various stages of my career. <laughs> we have a super chat, 750 rubles, which is apparently about $10 Ooh. from Crystal of Hope. Thank you very much, Crystal of Hope. That'll be uh, one of our meals sorted for the night. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone else wants to continue donating. Uh, what is the best way to keep a blood flowing if I sit at a desk all day long and have varicose veins? Walking? How often and for how long? If you don't answer such questions, it's okay to love your content. Oh, thanks. Keep your feet moving. 
that's what you want yeah whenever people go on flights you've got to you know keep the blood flowing through your legs by keeping your feet moving but you have your standing up desk yeah you? standing desk is great if also if you've tried one of those treadmill desks that's kind of next on my to buy list like where you, treadmill desk yeah you've got a treadmill underneath your desk and you're like literally just walking along that sounds like torture and you walk like eight miles in a day just by walking casually and you don't even notice it but you've got your steps in I don't think I'd be very good at that probably not <laughs> um, but yeah Crystal of Hope I would recommend a treadmill desk people I've spoken to who use treadmill desks say it's like the best thing ever and it's changed their life so you, you might want to try that out mm. um, but yeah walking is good if you can do walking then it's always good for the soul I think going for a walk Oh, this is a good question. Have you ever thought, am I breaking the rules here? In what? In, my, in, in the job, I imagine. I don't know what that would mean, though. Am I breaking the rules? Yeah. About what? Henry Richard, please be more we're specific. We're still out of focus, you know. No, we're not. We're not. Mm. Henry Richard, please be more specific with your question. Uh, oh, we have another super chat. Ten pounds! From Naheem Gul Hussain. Thanks, man. Or gal. Uh, or whatever. <laughs> um, thank you. That'll basically be our takeaway sorted for tonight. Wow. That was very kind. And there's not even a question attached to that. I didn't even know you could do this. What a legend. Thank you. I think the rules question is interesting because... Am I breaking the rules? Because I feel like on the job, I occasionally do things where I feel like I'm breaking the rules but then I often think well who made the rules in the first place right so for example as a general rule we're not allowed to request ultrasound scans after 5 p.m because the ultrasound department is closed but if you know that they're running a little bit late and you go up to the receptionist and beg and be like please you know just, just one scan please you know <laughs> then often they'll do it and that is technically kind of breaking the rules but it's it's an arbitrary rule that's yeah, you know, I, it's not like I a rule recently rule. really begged for someone to get their prescription so they could leave hospital even though I submitted it four minutes after they closed it, accepting them yeah um and yeah trying to get someone to have their ultrasound even though they were sent on the wrong bed and they've missed their slot yeah yeah if you're if you really try you can you can often bend, bend get, the rules get stuff done but i don't worry about breaking the rules in that sense if yeah. i were like going completely off protocol and prescribing yeah. the wrong antibiotic <laughs> then yeah i would worry am i breaking the rules but yeah i think um, generally you i i think maybe sometimes like early on if your consultant is saying to do something that's not the guidelines as well sometimes that's tricky because they're saying we're gonna do this and you're like but the guidelines for a like lower respiratory tract infection say this antibiotic um and you have to kind of accept that often what your consultant says goes but and they might have hopefully a reason for doing it slightly differently but yep um molly how do you keep your hair so beautiful and shiny oh thanks um i don't know i mean this has been up all day at work but i did wash it today so i only realized like two weeks ago that girls always wear the hair up at work you have to i just had never noticed that it's before. really annoying <laughs> really annoying yeah. because then if i have something like this after work or like a um, meeting a friend or something, then I basically have to accept that it's going to be up all day. Nice. Joseph says, Molly, when are you starting your blog? Um, I have got a blog. I don't really use it very often. At this point, you say the URL and people will visit it. It's called www.cambridgefoodie.com. Nice. But let me know any content you want there because at the moment, it's just random recipes and reviews of restaurants. But... If there's anything you want, let me know. Oh, we have another five euro super chat from Carlos Bornis. Carlos, mate, I feel like you've donated a super chat in the past. Your name and picture looks familiar. This is really odd that people can just donate money no to question, us. No question, just for the food. We don't need money donated to us. Well, no, we don't, but we can get a takeaway tonight with the proceeds of this. Right. <laughs> Which we wouldn't have done otherwise. <laughs> I feel so, a bit um, strange about people donating money. Please don't feel you have to donate money. What advice would you give to a 15 or 16 year old medical aspirant? I would say just get really good grades because that's the main thing that matters. Um, I would say try to, I would say that you should try and get some experience so that you can understand what medicine actually involves. 
Okay, but realistically, come on, like a week of work experience is not going to give anyone an idea of what medicine actually involves. Yeah, but you don't, it doesn't have to be work experience. You can talk to people and find out what their job is like and watch your videos. That will give them an idea. Oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> but as in, I, I think that's important because there's a lot of people who I met who just turned up at medical school and then were like, I don't actually want to be here. I don't want to be a doctor. I don't know. I feel like this is an over-exaggeration because we all had to do work experience of some description to get in. Mm. And I don't know about your experience of work experience, but most of the doctors that I spoke to, even at the time, said... To be honest, if I had my time again, I probably wouldn't do it. Mm. Maybe I was just talking to the wrong people. But like every, everyone who gets into medical school, school has done work experience mm. as a requirement for getting in. Mm. But I feel like the short amount of time you do work experience cannot prepare you for what it's actually yeah, like. Yeah, that's why I'm saying get some experience that you feel is actually showing you mm. stuff about medicine. Like, for instance, I went to speak to a GP about her career and about the job rather than getting experience just shadowing gp consultations and things i think it's if you can find out more about hospitals and how they work that might tell you if you actually want to do medicine because there were quite a few people who did leave medical school because they then realized it wasn't for them yeah true which i feel like is a bit of a waste when so many people apply uh we actually had a 10 pound donation from patrick sinclair but his message was deleted by arman arman can you stop being so heavy-handed on the moderation please (laughs) because <laughs> uh, we can't see this message now oh. so Patrick thank you so much for the donation Thanks, Patrick let us know if you have an actual question yeah, if you post a question in the chat normally we will make sure to prioritise it and oh man stop being before <laughs> Molly moves out Ali please make her do a tech review of any gadget she uses I use this gadget what is it it is <laughs> here's my tech review I'm really good at these it's, it's not um, written on it <laughs> it is an iPhone 11 very good and that is the only gadget I use you're welcome Cool. And we have another super... Ron? Is that Romanian something? From Tau Alexandru. Thank you for the £7.49. Oh my goodness. Or whatever that equivalent is in Romanian currency. I think it's Romanian. <laughs> I'm not sure if they use the euro. Do they use the euro? Mm. Molly is the cutest pie ever. Nice. Thanks. Um, okay. I have nothing to do besides having a YouTube channel this summer. What, sh- what else should I, should I do to fill the time? Is that a plug for... Product Timothy's YouTube channel. I guess it is. Everyone will visit Product Timothy's YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, another super chat from Super Christ Lover. Please stop Excellent. sending these in. This makes me feel really bad. I feel like I have to do this. So here you go. No, please don't feel like you have to do this. Um, but Super Christ Lover, thank you. Noted. <laughs> um, Molly, if I wanted to do what Ali is doing, a YouTuber and a doctor, what would my life look like? I think, well... Basically, Ali spends all of his time at work or filming videos. I also spend a lot of time just waste manning. I spent an hour and a half this morning just lying on the sofa scrolling Instagram. Yeah, he does do that. Everyone thinks that he's the most productive person in the world. But often I find him procrastinating, especially about brushing his teeth. He spends about an hour building up to brushing his teeth. Yeah, it's, it's, it gets very problematic. Oh, mm. Carlos, thank you for the other five, five euros. Molly and Ali, we need to set up a Rocket League game. Rocket League is really good. What's Rocket League? It's like this uh, sort of football, but with cars. Right. And you sort of boost and you, there's a huge ass ball. It's like a video game. Okay. You, play, you, can, you can play on the Switch. It's really good. The Switch? On the Switch. Isn't that what... Is it called the Switch or is it just called Switch? On Switch or on the Switch? I don't know. What is Switch? You know, the, it sounded the, like you were talking about the Instagram or the Facebook. No, I'm uh, the, the Switch is, is it the PlayStation the Switch? or like the iPhone. Okay, I'm fine. sure. I'm sure their marketing would say you know shot on iPhone, uh-huh. but it would be reasonable for people to say shot. Sure. Sam Donnellan, seventy nine pennies. Thank you very much for that. Um, oh, here we go. Will Peach. Oh, Will. Hello. We were meant to chat today, but we evidently didn't manage to chat today. Do you feel the UK is unnecessarily precious about their med school application process, forcing a fair amount of Brit students to pursue education abroad without NHS bursaries, etc.? I think it's a supply and demand thing. What, as in, in what? As in the UK is unnecessarily competitive in med school applications. Forcing people to then go abroad. I mean, supply and demand, man. <laughs> there is a certain yeah. number of med school places... It's a you competitive thing. You can't really thing. train everybody who applies. Yeah. And also a lot of people who apply probably shouldn't get in as well because you need to have a certain level of oh this sounds like it's bordering on being problematic <laughs> why as in like a certain degree of what to any no as in every single degree yeah. you're going to have many more applicants than are actually suitable for doing that degree and, yeah. and could actually do that degree yeah 
I thought you were going to say, you know, there are some people that just aren't, aren't intelligent enough to do medicine. I feel like that would be off-brand for you, though. No, 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 as in they might be, but, like, at the application stage, mm. you can't just accept everyone, can you, to any application, because yeah, okay. <gasps> not everyone's going to be able to do it. My goodness. A hundred dollar donation. What? No, you're kidding. Thank you, Ahad Al Hassan. You're an absolute legend. This is really weird. This Thank getting... you, but that's very mate. We can get the unnecessary. We, 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 we can get the hundred hundred quid sushi platter from. I've got <laughs> vegetables that go off. I'm making pasta tonight. I do think the emergency medicine suits you. Thank you. What's the most important productivity tip to not procrastinate? Uh, for me, it would be this banning be me the, from my phone. This is the hundred dollar answer. <laughs> Well, if I need to not procrastinate, I need to just have my phone taken away from me because I spend hours on my phone. That's all yeah. I do in the evening is just sit on my phone. Yeah, man. Um, people have started using those like time safes. It's like a container. You put your phone in it and it yeah, doesn't let you open like it. Yeah, it, it like grows a tree if you leave it for a while. Have you yeah, seen those ones? Mm -hmm. Well, like Forest the app. Yeah. You've clearly not seen any of my ha what's on my for iPhone videos. Um, mm -hmm. <sighs> I haven't Thanks. seen any of your videos. Thank you, Ahad al Hassan, for the donation. Oh, here we go. Don't feel guilty, Molly. People donate to live streamers all the time. Alanev donated five pounds just to say that. Thank you so much. We have another one, 199 from Murray Child. What's the best pre-med course for med school? That's a very American question. We don't really do pre-med no, in the I don't UK. Know what pre-med means. And I'm sorry, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I guess chemistry? Biology? Um. What does that even mean? Um, okay, oh, whoa, whoa, we've got loads of comments. Um, this is just Ali being happy and Molly feeling guilty. Ali, why are your ears and nose always red? Cambridge or Oxford? Uh, if you don't feel like giving money, you can always donate it to charity. Charity begins at home. Oh, what is this? This is a hundred like rupees or something. Arvind Ramachandran, thank you, Ali, for everything. I'm a fan. Thank you very much, Arvind. Thank you for the cheeky donation. Love you. Uh, what A levels did you do and what grades did you get? I don't know if I want that to be public. Why not? Because you're embarrassed. <laughs> I did maths, chemistry, biology, and German. And I got three A stars and an A in German. Oh, okay. I can see why you want that to be public. <laughs> <laughs> I did bio, biology, chemistry, physics, and maths. And I did English literature at AS, but then I dropped it for A2 and I got four A stars. And I did general studies oh, as well right. and got an A star in that, but no one's counting. Great job. Yeah. Proud of you. Thanks, man. Oh, Jack Hennessy, five euros 49. Thank you. Hi, guys. If I'm getting 60 to 70% in some important subjects as a 15 year old, do you think I could improve enough so I could, I could study medicine? Well, yeah, if you, if you work hard and, yeah. <laughs> and work in the right way, then you can improve it. Yeah, man. Check out my Skillshare class on how to study for exams. Mm. That gives you basically everything you need to know to study for exams. Use active recall and space repetition. If you're not getting very good grades, just in general, chances are you're not testing yourself enough. That is like the single biggest thing that makes people get magically, immediately better grades, just testing themselves more. It is the way forward. Um, we are oh, Fiverr from Patrick Sinclair. Oh, oh, was that the one the, who... The dude who pre previously gave 10 pounds, but then yeah. our man was being a bit... What's your proudest moment as a doctor in the past two years can be outside slash inside of being a doctor? Um, proudest moment um, in two years oh yeah because that's how long we've been talking oh, yeah. about that I didn't understand that um, I'm trying to think like a moment where you felt dead chuffed with yourself hmm <laughs> I had one a few weeks ago where one of the consultants said to me, hey Ali, um, my heart always sings whenever I see that you're on call with me because it's really nice working with you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank you. That was like, that was like the best thing ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, those, it's nice when people give you good feedback. Um, I don't know, in medicine, there's just, I find I've, there's just lots of little things that you're, Proud of. There's not like one massive moment that is incredible. Um, doing 10K was, I was probably more proud of than anything I've done in medicine. Doing 10K? Mm. As in racing 10K. Molly did a wheelchair race and raced 10 kilometers. Yeah. And she was very proud of that. And I won it. 
You even though it. no, no, no you, you want it that's all the matter <laughs> you want it okay let's leave it there. <laughs> um oh hassan Qureshi, enjoy the food shameless plug medic styles what's medic styles i don't know but apparently hassan wants us to look uh should we google medic styles oh i'm trying to search with google medic styles um it's a fantastic clothing store with hundreds of satisfied customers. Oh, are these? Mm. These are T-shirts that have medical stuff written on them. Yeah, just a sharp like scratch. This vet rocks. Love doctors. Oh, we should get that for. Uh... Nice. There <laughs> That's you go. pretty cool. Medic styles. Everyone, check out medicstyles.com. <laughs> this is a, this is a good ROI on your marketing budget, mate. Whoa. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, Where's the that... chat thing gone? Oh, here's oh, the chat thing. Is. Um, Thank you, Hassan Qureshi, for the plug. Ali, your camera is focused on the mic. Fix it. Wow, that's a bit, that's a bit, bit aggressive. <laughs> Can I be Molly's flatmate when you go to the USA? No, I'm moving out and living with someone else. Many apologies. Um, oh, I think we have we have another super chat. Scroll down a bit. Can we not look five, at the people? Five sing dollars. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said it in that accent. It's a bit racist. Uh, I'm mid twenties. What advice would you give to get things together? Dating, fam, career, YouTube as it seems like there's a pressure to get it right, right ASAP. Uh, well, on the dating front, <laughs> I consider yeah, myself Annie. an armchair expert on this. Um, a book that someone recently recommended to me was How to Be a 3% Man. And I've started reading that and I think, damn, this is some good stuff. Other things I would recommend are Models by Mark Manson, The Game by Neil Strauss, The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene, The Rational Male by Rollo Tomasi. What else we've got? The Mystery Method is a bit crap, old school. Um, start with those books. Uh, what else? Family. You're a family girl, aren't you? <laughs> what about getting things together I mean, with your family? I mean, I, I feel like that I mean, starts with... That's kind of, yeah. I, be, being nicer to your parents and then getting married and stuff. Career and YouTube. I think do what you enjoy. Yeah. That's good advice. If you can. Obviously, that's a... A privileged thing to say. Yeah. You and your white privilege. If you can do, do something you enjoy and then it will fall into place much more easily than if you're forcing yourself to do something you don't enjoy. You're really entertaining together. You should do this more often. Oh, right. Molly, do you want to pick some more questions now? Then we can. Yeah, because you keep picking the super chat ones, and I think we should pick people who aren't paying for it. <laughs> That's so socialist. Molly clearly votes Labour. Uh, the problem is that I can't read this as quickly as you can. It's not How your first do I actually okay. get? Oh, right, fine. Um. Both looking great. Nice. Thanks, man. What's the most unconventional choice you've made in your lives? From Maya. Starting a YouTube channel is pretty rogue. Yeah. Um, probably choosing not to... Well, it's not very unconventional, but choosing not to uh, train straight away and having a year out this year. Nice. Um... Right, I need a wee. You can keep answering questions. <laughs> oh God, here it goes. This is me going solo. Um, right, just so you all know, there's about five different things on this screen and I don't understand any of them, so bear with. Um, when you move to the USA, will your coffee offer still stand? Yeah. Of course it will. Ali will have a coffee offer forever. Um, Uh, have you ever had to deal with difficult colleagues, Ali? No comment. <laughs> Ali has no comment on that one. You always have difficult colleagues, but you just have to figure out, make sure you do your best and then um, don't sort of follow them if they're trying to do the wrong thing. Molly, what techniques do you use for study? Um, well, I basically just, when I study, basically what I do is I have, I make um, spider diagrams of something. So I will read notes. I don't tend to make my own notes. I just read the notes, try and sort of remember it all and test myself as I go along on it. I guess Ali would call that active recall. And then I make 
spider diagrams, which is again active recall, I guess, where you are, um, so say it's like blood disorders or something, I'll make a spider diagram and try and write everything I can and then fact check it against the notes I've just read. Um, that tends to be my, my way of studying. Um, embarrassing story about Ali. Hmm. What embarrassing story about Ali could I give you all? Um, let's have a think. I don't know what would be embarrassing for him. The problem is he doesn't really get embarrassed by anything. Um, I guess the fact that he's really untidy. Huh? He tries to pretend that he's all clean, but actually everything, like you'll see this perfect thing in all of his YouTube videos, and actually the whole house is a tip most of the time. I don't... Molly, what is your favourite colour? Blue is my favourite colour. Any more super chats? Anyone? No, stop it. Uh, where is Molly from? I'm from somewhere called Harpenden, which is just north of London. No, Molly, where are you really from? <laughs> Harpenden, just north of London. How do you get so comfortable on camera and with sharing your life online? Ali can answer this one because I'm still not there yet. Yeah, but you're sort of, you've moved along. So how, how have you become more comfortable with it? Well, because of exposure. Like there's no way you would have done this you... like two years ago. No. Um, well, because I constantly spend my life avoiding it, it's becoming easier to be in your videos than out of them. But I think once you start doing it, you get more used to it, don't you? Why is the UK COVID death rate so high? Loads of different reasons. Multifactorial. Yeah, too many things to answer there. I'm Especially afraid. if you're just going to donate $2 for that question. <laughs> That's a million dollar question, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Molly, do you ever get the feeling that Ali thinks he's better than you? How does this make you feel? Uh, That's a good question. Do you get the feeling that I think you're better than me? I think you think the way you do things is better than everyone. How so? What, what, what thing specifically? As in, I don't think you inherently as a person think you're better than me. Mm. But you will often try to interrogate the way that I do things and find ways of why I should be doing it your way. Okay. So and try and educate me in the way that I could be enlightening myself to your amazing way of doing things. Of course. But actually... You don't. You might not sometimes think actually her way might be better. Uh, what sort of things are you? You do change to? some things that you do, but um, I don't know. Just all the things of self-esteem or productivity or those kind of things. Mm. You automatically think that your way is the best way. Self-esteem-wise. No, I think or... in 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 lots of things. Okay. I, I'm not giving exact examples <laughs> of it. But like we have so many chats where it's you trying to interrogate why on earth I would be doing something in this way. Yeah. And you and think that you that comes from a place of me, thinking that I, I, I have the answer and the way you're doing it is wrong, which is why I'm trying to understand it. Yeah, almost thinking why, why would you do it this way? Okay. And trying to educate me to be a different way, whereas often I'm like, I'm happy the way I am. Okay. Interesting. But I think you think a lot of people could improve their life, with, obviously, with the things that you put out there. But actually, I think there are multiple ways to function and to do well and to be happy. And they don't necessarily have to be your way. But that doesn't mean you think you're better than other people. I'm, I'm surprised you get that idea because I've certainly always been an advocate of people can do whatever the hell they want. But... Yeah, no, I don't think you... you try to make people do anything else but for example I think you're often like amazed that I would do something in the way I do yeah and because it's a different way like but being. why why would you think that way yeah and you try to sort of teach me how to 
do it differently. Oh, is that the impression you get there? I'm, I'm mm. trying to teach you how to do it differently. Mm. As opposed to I'm trying to... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand your point of view and figuring out where, where we disagree. Yeah, but you know how we've talked about before that, like, yeah. some people... Um, like, sometimes you need someone to just be like, yes, that's rubbish... I'm sorry that that's happened or mm. something yeah. rather than being like let's interrogate how you manage this situation and try and okay. change it so I think it's your way of trying to help someone yeah, because like... that's how you would interrogate yourself as to mm. why did this happen and how did I react to it and that kind of thing whereas yeah, sometimes like other people would just want to be like yes that was really <laughs> difficult or okay. yes it's really hard Let's leave it at that, rather than being like, but why are you thinking this, 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 this? Okay. Yeah, I think I definitely kind of, uh, sort of certainly more so in the past, have defaulted to problem-solving mode. Mm. Because in the past, I wrongly believed that if someone, and, you know, for, for example, you, was complaining about a problem, th the only rational reason to complain about a problem is because you want that problem to be solved. Yeah. But there is a large swath of the population who would complain about a problem purely for the sake of complaining about the problem, mm. not looking for a solution for it. I would disagree that that's because I think I'm this way is better. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's 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 surprising. And then you think, oh, OK, I guess that's the way some people are. Fair enough. Yeah. You're like, oh, you've had a bad day. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that <laughs> type yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you think you're better than me. Okay, good. Because okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm better than you. And yeah, I good. want to... I, I, I was concerned mm. if you got that impression. No. Because it means that I'm not coming across the way that I am internally. No, no, no. But I think you... But it's helpful because you make me think about things in a different way. Often. People are complaining about the focus. Yeah, I know. It's because of that. Um, Oh, here we go. This is fun. Is that what F means? Focus. It's really interesting that for a lot of a lot of us, all of this, Ali is at this pedestal, but for Molly, she's just coming at him full criticism. <laughs> you go, sis. Yes, sis, you go. <laughs> he is just a normal person with many, many flaws, which I've spent two years working at. Yep. Um, Lul, this is so passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Ali did that this video when talking about imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah trying to understand why you feel feel that sense of thingy towards your exams and yeah. why you are that way yeah in that sense i think my way my, my way is objectively better because it means See. it makes me less it it reduces the amount of suffering in the world uh -huh. and i think that is better uh -huh. <laughs> it is better all right uh -huh. <laughs> guys come on <laughs> agree with me on this one molly 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 how do you look learn or remember stuff from just reading do you just reread it before spider diagrams but this is what i meant is that i read it but as i'm reading it i constantly will be like oh try and remember the thing that i read two pages ago and how does that relate to what i'm reading now etc etc which is why i was talking about the active learning that ali puts a name to but yes i think i some people find it easier to remember stuff if they write it down, but for me, that doesn't help me, and that takes me a lot longer. So it's easier for me if I read, but I spend a long time reading because I'm thinking back over stuff over and over again and thinking how it links to a different thing I've read. In other words, active recall. Yeah. And then the spider diagram is the icing on the cake. You're in charge of the questions. Am I'm, I? I'm, I'm just thinking back. I find it really difficult. This thing goes so, so quickly. Yeah, man. People are commenting too many things. Does Molly have a YouTube channel? No, she doesn't. Um, but these ones I've seen before, though. So Yeah, these... people are repeating questions. Right, okay, fine. That's in why I was getting very confused. In a desperate bit to get attention. Okay. Um, is Molly more productive than you? No. Oh, Taha, hey. How's it going? We should grab lunch on Tuesday, tomorrow, if you're free. Um, Sorry. What's your biggest pet peeve? With each other or in general life? Um, I've always said that my biggest pet peeve is that Ali doesn't put things away. So there's like a sea of 
where he's opened a box of something, the box is still there just as he's taken the stuff out. He's left the packaging just unraveled. There's a milk lid left there where he's just made the tea. I feel like I should have Will Smith's face plastered on my face right now. <laughs> but it's the leaving stuff out. I don't understand that. Mate, the kitchen is so clean right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. But you ha you didn't tell me that a cleaner had come. You took the uh, the credit for that. How different does Ali act off camera? He doesn't really act differently. He acts the same. Um... Put Jake on your videos, Ali. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see lots of videos of Jake. And Jake's moving here, so you'll see even more oh, videos deep when, dive with Jake. when Ali turns up at our house all the time. Also, we have a good episode of our podcast, Not Overthinking, uh, talking about lad culture, where Jake was a guest, the guest really? of honor. I didn't know that. You were there while we were recording it. I don't think I've ever listened to that though. Oh, oh so I must have listened to it. Yeah, as you were, like, you were talking sat there about and you were kind of laughing, like, like cackling in the background. Fine. Oh, I think I was made to film that one to record that. Name some self-help books, Molly. I don't think I have any self-help books. There's probably lots out there. Molly, do you play an instrument? I used to play clarinet. Um, I haven't played it in about five years at least. I should get that out another time. Uh, how was Cambridge helpful in both of your learning experiences? What advantages do you think Cambridge has given you? Brand. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I loved going to Cambridge. It was really, really good. And I thought I would hate it, but it was it's amazing. It was really fun, yeah. It was really fun. It's like really it's sociable. It's really, some really fun experiences, like formal dinners and really unique things like Mabel's, that kind of thing. Um, but I do think actually also things like... Uh, because we used to have these like small group supervisions where there'd be like five or six of us and so you'd have to put forward your point and those kind of things um so i think it made you much better at speaking up and answering questions on the spot uh because of that method of teaching oh double super chat ali please check out emails if you get the chance it's the same as plug from medic styles I, f I feel like I've it's seen medic styles again i feel like i've seen your emails and i feel like i looked at the stuff but i, f I felt like it's not the sort of clothing that I would actually realistically wear. But you would wear this. This is David Dobrik merch. Who's that? Oh, Molly, come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this says clickbait. This is like, this is like clever. Whereas, you know, a t-shirt saying medicine rocks is, is just a bit lame. Sorry, mate. Mm. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you can send me links to specific things where the, where, where the design or the branding is possibly more subtle or more clever then I'll be happily, I'll happily check them out. What do you both see each other doing in 15 to 30 years? This is a good question. Yeah, let me have a think. What do I see you doing in 15 to 30 years? So you'll be between the age of 40 and 55. Yeah. I reckon you will have four kids by that point and you'll be a full-time mom. I don't want four kids. I used to think I did, but I don't think, I, th I okay. haven't got enough time now. <laughs> oh, C-sections. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, but that's full C-sections. Yeah. Don't want that. Three or four kids. Exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll be a full-time mum. I used to think I would, but I do quite like working, actually. Mm. So I don't know if I'll do part-time. Yeah. We'll see. I think, where do I see you in 30 years' time? Fifty-five. Um, well, I think you will have. I think you'll be big in medical education because that's where you want to go. No, not future. anymore. CBA. Oh, fine. Yeah. Well, that's out. The, that's out in the books then. I don't know. You could be doing anything in thirty years' time. I presume you won't still be working full time as a doctor there's no way you'll be doing that correct <laughs> but then i can't see you I just hope. doing ad hoc a and e shifts i feel like you'll have had to train in something by mm. then so 
I don't know. Maybe you'll be in America, living it up. Who knows? Hmm. Um, I want to do medicine, but I'm afraid the workload would be too much. Do you have any advice? Just do it. Um, the workload is not too much. You can cope with the workload. So th that's a very wholesome way of answering. I would default to answering that if you think the workload will be too tough, then don't do it. Yeah, if you, I mean, only do it if. But then I felt. But like I, feel I like would have you said would have thought that. the workload yeah, would have been too tough. Yeah, I would tough. have said, oh, I'm scared that there's going to be too and much work. And you would have work. needed this that sort of. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, the whole medical workload thing is an absolute myth. It's propagated by everyone who thinks, oh, I'm a medical student. I'm hard done by because my life is really freaking hard because I work really hard. It's propagated by all the medical applicants who are like, oh, my God, I'm applying to medicine. It's the hardest thing in the world. It's it's all mythical. It's all very doable. It's no harder than most other degrees. And we as med as a medical sort of community, as a community of medical students and doctors, need to stop propagating this lie that medicine is just in inherently more difficult and harder than ever absolutely everything else. Mm. It is just... Oh, it's, <laughs> this is my pet peeve <laughs> when people uh, over glamorize the difficulty of medicine because it's cool yeah I I would agree to some extent it is difficult and there is a lot of work involved but it's totally doable and it's no different to a lot of other careers that you have to do how would you make that less but I still think it's blurry Molly why aren't you moving to America I would never move to America that I, the question was why. Well, firstly, I would never be able to afford my medical bills in America. I don't really like the privatisation um, of the system there. I don't like the idea of working as a doctor there in a system that is um, that people have to pay for your services. I really love the NHS and don't see myself working in a different system to that. But personally as well, I just... I like living here. I don't think I would suit America very well. Um, and yeah, as I said, I don't think I could pay for my own health care um, or get insurance. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Can you start a YouTube channel whilst doing medicine? No. <laughs> no, it's medicine, impossible. The, the workload is so hard that it's impossible <laughs> to do anything else. <laughs> Uh, Molly, what music do you listen to? Do you recommend listening to music while studying? I'm sure that you, you must have done a video on that. It's actually in the Skillshare class. Link in the video ah, description. there you go. <laughs> um, I listen to a very eclectic mix of either classic rock or um, like soppy music or musicals. That's kind of my vibe. Nice. Mm -hmm. How to prepare for a medical exam that takes three years to prepare, but you only have a year and a half. There is no medical exam that takes three years to prepare. This is a myth. This is falling into that myth of medicine is really hard. A year and a half is a very long time. I cannot imagine a single medical exam that you need more than a year and a half to prepare for. It's, yeah. it's a myth. <laughs> what did Molly do in third year? Thanks, Vanessa, for asking. Um, so in third year, for context, at Cambridge, you have a, um, well, when we did it, you had first two years, you would do sort of like preclinical medicine and anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, the hardcore science stuff. And then in third year, you had the choice of what you studied for that whole year, which was really cool because you could have a year out essentially of doing your um, actual degree. So I chose to do history and philosophy of science and medicine which I literally loved it was a year of um, just thinking completely differently writing essays about like the 18th century medicine um, so yeah I love that Ali did psychology and you can watch his video about how well he did on his YouTube channel <laughs> You won't be flatmates anymore. I hadn't even thought that you would stop living together. Will you miss each other? Ali told me yesterday he was going to miss me. I didn't, I didn't use the word miss. <laughs> <laughs> I said, specifically, I said, I was feeling sad that you're leaving, which mm -hmm. is not the same categorically as, as missing you. Mm -hmm. I said, I would feel sad that you're leaving because it would force me to confront my own loneliness. <laughs> 
Yeah. Although I don't think I use the word loneliness either. I say it would, it would force me to think about, uh, think harder about the meaning in my life. He's going <laughs> to miss me, basically. Yeah. I'll miss some things about living here. It's an interesting life, isn't it, living with someone like you? Yeah. Yeah, man. What do you think of biomedical engineering? <laughs> what the hell is biomedical engineering? <laughs> no I idea. think it sounds amazing. I think biomedical en engineering, you do things like make my hip. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Biomedical engineers make like uh, medical equipment. Oh, cool. I think. Please do a how I edit YouTube videos, Ali. Mate, I have a 35 video Skillshare class about this. Go to aliabdal.com slash editing to get free access to it. After becoming doctors, do you get day-to-day -day messages and phone calls from family about daily medical issues? No. I do every single day. Really? As in at the hospital. From family? Yeah, family phone calls. No, I no, guess no, no. It from, from your own family. Oh, from my family. I'm, I'm oh, assuming friends. that's what they meant too. Yeah, friends and family. Oh, about, oh yeah, I get that too. Oh, right, and I'd be like, hey, Yeah, what's going my on family there? always send me pictures of their, like, like latest... Rashes and warts and rash stuff. Rash yeah. or whatever. HPV, yeah. All that and every time I tell them to go to their GP because I can't give advice. Nice. Ollie, what's your favourite thing about Ollie? Oh, here we one. go. <laughs> Let's choose that one. Look, we keep still going out of focus. Okay, look, what, really we, could, we could just switch it to manual focus. And now we can do this. There we go. There we, go. We, we should have done the same. Yeah, great. Um, my favourite thing about Ali... <laughs> <laughs> um, mm, so many to choose from. This mm. is just really difficult. I can imagine. It must be, must be yeah, hard. it's really tough. Um, I think he always, he always makes time for other people. If, you need, if I needed your help, you would always be there. Yeah. As in, like, whenever I ask you to do something for me, you do actually do it for me. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say no to a reasonable request. Exactly. Yeah. But that's something some people, like, I know I can rely on you to do to help me if I need your help. Cool. Like, helping me move my belongings yesterday. Yeah, I think you're, you're buttering me up for the long moves that are going to happen over the next few weeks. I'm going to have to do a lot of moving my, equi yeah. my equipment, my belongings. Oh, Karthik Sharma, so boring. Well, I'm sorry this is boring for you, Karthik, you fat. <laughs> Stop calling people that. I don't like that word. What should I call him instead? Prick? <laughs> Karthik, you prick. No, that's not good either. <laughs> uh, Ali, give me some advice on starting a medical education company much like Six Med. Don't do it. It's a saturated market. It's really hard. Only do things where you have an unfair advantage because otherwise you're competing with too many people. So I would recommend against it. Also, I don't want you to compete against Six Med. How do you stay motivated, Ali? <laughs> 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 Ali loves the word motivation. I love the word motivation. Yeah. Do you think nurses get the credit they deserve? No. I could not be a nurse myself, and I think they do an amazing job. Ali's a sweetheart, yeah. Thanks, thanks cookies and potatoes, you legend. Molly, do you use Notion? No. Ali had to just teach me how to even get Notion to open on the computer just now. Molly, you are gorgeous, dear. Lots of love. Thank you. <laughs> Molly, as someone who lived with Ali for two years, what would you want to say to Ali's future wife? Oh, good question. Good luck. Yeah. That's what my mum would say as well. Yeah. Um, make sure you've got a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> And something to fill your time. <laughs> what is your idea of a day off from doing this? Um, day off, I would go for probably two meals out with different friends. Go for a swim. Maybe go to a nice National Trust place. Nice walk. Go to the Harriet Cafe and Tea Room. Yeah, it's really good. I've been many times. Yeah, I like it. Mm. No, Molly is a sweetheart. I don't know what that was in response to. Will future recipes be vegan? 
Was that a general question about the status to state of the world? I don't know, but if you're talking about my Cambridge foodie, then I make tofu stir fry about every few days. Although it does use egg noodles. If How? I use rice noodles, then it would be vegan. How did you persu persuade your family to live with Ali? How did I persuade my family? I think what they're asking is, how do you persuade your family that it was okay to live with me? They never questioned it. Really? Yeah. That's what they did. Well, as in they thought that living with one person might be... Oh, okay. But I didn't have any other person yeah. to live with, so I didn't <laughs> really have an choice, option. Yeah. yeah. Molly, what are your opinions of Tame? I love Tame. He's great. Although he does still owe me £6.50 for posting that parcel, so... He said he would pay it back recently. Yeah, there's no way he's watching this. <laughs> 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 All right, I feel like we should sort of come to a close. If anyone yeah. has any more super chats they'd like to give us for no. fi final, final few questions. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, fill your lifetime, fill your time, Molly, a savage. Someone should make that into a thug life meme. <laughs> um, what is Ali's dream girl like? I think Ali needs someone he's impressed needs, by. Needs is a strong word. I think Ali's dream girl is endlessly patient. <laughs> <laughs> no, he... But crucially, she's not a patient. <laughs> yes, true. I think his dream girl is someone he is impressed by and she has a lot going for them themselves. Because... I think you like it when you see someone who's doing something impressive. But it takes a lot to impress you, I think. Uh, that's fair to say. Mm. Yeah, all right. Should we call it a day? Yeah. Good stuff. Any parting comments? This has been fun. Yeah. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everyone, for joining in the chat. Thank you to everyone, especially a special thank you to everyone who's donated money. <laughs> <laughs> you are clearly... Uh... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I was going to say you are um, better people than the people who didn't donate but I thought no. that would be wrong to say over the internet that is wrong okay cool thank you for all the people who just did comments that's nice anything you'd like to plug follow her on Instagram yeah follow my Cambridge Foodie on Instagram um, and cambridgefoodie.com if you fancy and yeah you can see all of our fun of me moving out and living about 50 meters away so don't worry yeah i'll, I'll be here it's gonna be great <laughs> all right well time to order some takeaway <laughs> Woohoo! bye everyone